Hello everybody, so today I'm going to be filming a video about books that have made me cry. So if you've known me for a while, like have been watching my videos for a while, you probably know that I am definitely a book crier. Like I cry a lot in books, it doesn't matter if it's a sad moment or a happy moment, I will cry my eyes out no matter what. But ugly crying is a different story, so that's what I'm really be talking about in this video. So not the books that have kind of like made me shed a tear or two, but books that have made me keel over ugly crying, because that's where all the fun is. Okay, so before we get into books that have made me cry. I'm gonna be doing a quick unboxing sent to me by Penguin Random House. I'm working with them on today's video about books that have made me cry. Because they sent me a box of books that would make me cry and goodies as well. So I cannot wait to unbox it for you guys because it's a huge box. Huge! Okay, so the box is right here and we're gonna open it up right now. Ooh, pretty wrapping. Okay, so the first thing we have here is a poster. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, I already am loving it. Look at it. It's maybe for you. Oh gosh. I cannot wait to see this movie, guys. Like, I love the book. Oh my gosh, what are these? Oh my gosh. Look, they're Kleenexes with me before you want it. Guys, I'm gonna sob in this movie. Like, I sobbed in the book. Do you want to see a picture I took when I finished reading it? character she wants bumblebee tights she had them when she was younger and then when she got older like they went away I think her parents threw them away or something like that and so Louisa she was telling Will this one day and then on her birthday he got her bumblebee tights Ah, oh, the feels guys and look what they have in this package bumblebee socks I really want bumblebee tights now though next up we have a bag I love tote bags I need more of them penguin teen bananas oh I need these in my life a portable charger because I I always need those. My phone loves dying on me when it has like 20% left. Like it's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Look how cute that is. I love mugs so much. Look, look at this mug. It says just live with little bumblebees on it. So cute. Oh gosh, I just figured out where the, oh, mm, the feels just hit. Just live. Oh, oh, feeling over and feels. What? Huh? What? They got me tickets to see me before you. What? Oh my gosh, I love you, penguin. Look at that! Oh my gosh! Thank you! Oh my god, I'm so excited! Okay, I'm really happy. I'm very happy. Thank you guys. Okay, lastly, we have a little book haul for you. Okay, so of course the first book we have is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This book is an amazing story about a girl named Louisa and she lives in a pretty much a very rural, very quiet, sleepy town in the UK and nothing really goes on there. She doesn't really do anything with her life. She has a dead-end job, a dead-end boyfriend, but you know what? She's okay with it because she doesn't know anything better. This is all she knows until she has to get another job and that job ends up being the caretaker for Will who is a quadriplegic man. Probably pronounce that, I'm not good at pronouncing that. He is very, very depressed. This is not the life that he ever wanted to live. Nobody would want to live a life like this. He was a very active, very spontaneous man. And then being confined to a wheelchair the rest of his life is not the most ideal situation for him. But then Louisa comes into play and she becomes his caretaker. And the reason Louisa is his caretaker is because she is very spunky. She's very out there. She has lots of life, which is funny from a girl who lives in a very dull town and lives a very very dull life. She has so much spunk. She dresses crazily like bumblebee tights and she's just really cool and so she kind of shows him the side of life that you do not want to give up fighting for. And it's truly a phenomenal story and I highly recommend that you read this. It shows not just like romance, it shows just two people growing together as people and showing the truly just beautiful side of life that is out there and you just need somebody else sometimes to help you see it. So that is my quick little summary of this book. It made me bawl my eyes out. It's a very, very very difficult book to read, especially at the end, but it's truly worth it. It's definitely a roller coaster, and I'm really glad that it opened up my eyes to certain situations the characters went through in this novel that I never really thought of before. The next book is Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. Okay, so this book is about a girl named Cindy, and she lives a very quiet life, just like Louisa, and she tends to stay out of the spotlight, but that is until her brother gets sent to jail from a terrible accident that happened, and it thrusts her family into the spotlight in not the best way. But luckily, there's a family who owns the local pizza a joint that welcomes Cindy into their family with open arms. There's Lila, Mysterious Rosie, and Mac. Quiet and protective Mac. And he makes Cindy feel safe and secure in a time that her life is anything but. And so finally, Cindy is able to focus on what really matters, which is love, friendship, and just the most important part of it all, 
herself. Okay, the next book I cannot wait to read because everybody says such fantastic things about it. Like, everybody's like, oh, you've got to read this. And I'm like, I know, the cover's gorgeous. So that's one of the reasons why I got to read it. Second of all, it just sounds so phenomenal. So let's see what's about. So the book is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. So this book is about June and her twin, Noah, and they are inseparable. Noah is falling for the boy next door, and June, she is obsessed with cliff diving. And she's the chatterbox for the both of them because Noah, he's kind of calmer, kind of not as out there as Jude is, especially since Jude, you know, cliff dives. That's crazy. I would never be able to do that. I will never say never. Years later, Jude and Noah end up just not talking as much as they used to, and there's really a rift between their siblingship. But then Jude meets a very irresistible boy and a very mysterious new mentor. And this book is about how the early years are for Noah to tell and how the later years are for Jude to tell. But they each only have half the story, and it's about them trying to make their way back to each other. And then they'll be able to remake their world. So I'm really excited to be reading this book. Okay, with that part of the video done, let's get into the books that have made me cry and ball my eyes out. Okay, so in this video, I'm not going to be mentioning all the books that I cried to because I want to make a separate video about that as well. But right here, I'm going to be mentioning four books that have made me ball my eyes out and have made me literally have to gasp for air in order to get enough breath in because I'm just crying that hard. It was so much fun. But I have so many books that have made me cry in different types of ways, so I kind of want to make a video about books that made me cry when I'm happy about it, when I'm sad, when I'm just dysfunctional in the heart because of what happened in the book. So this video is mainly about books that are sad that have made me cry in sad parts. So the first book is Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This book is amazing. It's a part of a series of books by Cassandra Clare that take place in the Nephilim world, the Shadowhunter world, but in the 1800s. And it follows the story of Jem, Tessa, and Will and about their adventures together. And at the end of this book series, it has this very emotional part where um, it has all the three characters back together and something is happening to a certain character and it just made me bawl my eyes out because, you know, you've been through hell and back with these characters and then all of a sudden, like, this certain point of the book happens and it makes you really sad because you're like, you know, it's a happy, it's happy because they're all together, but then it's sad because of what the circumstances are and ah. Uh. <sighs> the next book is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzma. So this book is a very controversial novel. It's about incest and about these two characters and they live in the UK and they are brother and sister and they take care of their younger siblings because their mother is very absent in their lives. And it's about them trying to like, you know, stay afloat in this world that is just working against them. And their mom is not there. So they have to kind of take over the roles as the parents to their younger siblings. And then that leads to romantic feelings between the two. And it does not mean it's okay at all, but the situation that it is that's sad enough that their mother is absent but then how they fall for each other because of that is also really sad but the most sad part isn't really about them but about how this book ends and I just remember crying my eyes out walking to my mom's room and just bawling my eyes out to her I'm like it's so not fair <laughs> I just remembering how hysterical I was and I'm like I sound so wrong how it's about incest but the circumstances that were happening at the end of the book are just awful and ah and it was so sad because you just wanted to reach into that book and like push the circumstances away and just have have everything end as happy as it could happen and be but that's definitely not gonna be a case where the main point in this book is incest incest does not end well so no matter what the circumstances are i feel like this would have ended badly and it ended very sadly and it made me cry so hard because you may not ended up caring for these characters together but you ended up caring about them separately and that's really where i came in and i started crying because i really care about them separately not because of the romantic stuff in between the two because that's just weird the next book is of course outlander by Danica. Gabaldon. I cried my eyes out in this book because, you know, certain circumstances in the end of it really made me want to keel over and just stay there in the fetal position for very long amounts of time. These circumstances that this one character goes through are truly horrific. You never expected it to happen ever in a novel that you would read, but it did happen and it does happen. And knowing that it did happen and it, this does happen in real life and it just is not talked about because it's such a taboo that seeing it happen in a book and you weren't totally prepared for it because you didn't expect something to happen like this you expect somebody to come right in and sweep this character away and save them but that doesn't happen and so you're just totally caught off guard and was like oh my gosh that actually happened and oh it was really good in the sense of it made you feel so much emotion I actually had to put the book down like four times when I was reading that certain scene because I literally could not go on and read it 
straight through. It was just that hard. And I remember watching this scene play out in the TV show Outlander and I almost threw up. I, I seriously almost threw up. I think I got a little baby barf in the back of my throat. Ugh. <laughs> but of course I cried because I care about this character and care about what happens to them and seeing them like relive it Oh. Okay, so that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out any of these books, I'll be linking them all down below. So go check them out. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!